One of the most recognized rifles ever produced and one that served in the United States military and Marines for well over half a century now, becoming famed for its use in the Vietnam War. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're taking a look at the truly iconic M40 sniper rifle. Considering its long service with the US Armed Forces, it's unsurprising that the M40 and its army variant, the M24, have been a staple of the franchise since its early days. The weapon was included in Battlefield Vietnam, Battlefield 2, Bad Company, Bad Company 2 and its Vietnam expansion, Battlefield Play for Free, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. As always here on Through the Ages, we'll start with Bad Company 2. The weapon here is split into two parts. We have the M24 Army variant in the main base game, and we have the wooden stock original M40 in the Vietnam expansion. And for reasons, I'm going to start with the Vietnam expansion. It was the only bolt action rifle to be included in this section of the game, which made it quite easy for opposing players to combat it if they knew the game well enough. Doing 105 damage out to 20 meters and having a 3.25 headshot multiplier, this rifle was really a portable powerhouse. Just aim for the head and without a doubt, you'd be taking every soldier down if you hit it dead on. Besides its power, it held 5 rounds in a magazine, took 5 seconds to reload, which is quite a long time, and offered a good rate of fire of 36 rounds a minute. As I say, it's the only bolt action rifle you could pick in the expansion, so its usage was always very high. But it had a couple of unique features that I'd like to mention. On the side of the weapon, as was common back in the Vietnam War, the words Hell Sucks were engraved into the left side, and if you look very closely, the words Born to Kill are engraved on the left side of the magazine, which is possibly a reference to the movie Full Metal Jacket. Back in the base game, Bad Company 2 offers us the US Army variant of the M40, designated the M24. The only real difference in real life between the M40 and the M24 is the M40 uses a short action model of the Remington 700 and the M24 uses a long action version. And this really isn't reflected in the game, but it's just more to fit the fact that the US Army is the faction in Bad Company 2's multiplayer and in the Vietnam War the Marines played a massive part. So that's the reason you've got two separate weapons really. The M24 is the starter sniper in Bad Company 2 and usually that means it's just there to get you into the game, to get you used to the mechanics and then you can move on to another weapon. But in this case, it's still actually one of the best rifles that you can pick to put in your loadout. It has the same damage model as the SV-98 and the Gold Sniper Magnum, but it fires slower than the SV-98 while being more accurate, and it fires faster than the Gold Sniper Magnum, but it sacrifices accuracy there, which is where the goal wins out. It's intended to be used at medium to long range due to its slightly slower rate of fire and extremely high damage, but if you were to take it into a close quarters area, which in Bad Company 2 sometimes happens, you go from massive open deserts down into tiny little towns, because of that high damage, you're still likely to inflict a lot of damage to players if you're quick enough to land that shot. Moving forward to Battlefield 3 now, which when going from the Vietnam War in the 1960s to present day, that means we saw a move from the original model to the A3 variant of the M40. And overall, the weapon saw a significant downgrade in Battlefield 3, or perhaps what it's better described as is more of a reclassification in Battlefield 3, because the weapon does play a very different role. Battlefield 3 has many more weapons than the Vietnam DLC does in Bad Company 2, and that means it needs to be balanced against the other rifles a lot more effectively. The M40A3 falls right into the middle of all of the rifles on offer, and that gives you a fairly standard damage model, 80 max falling off to 54, but offering a significantly faster rate of fire. In fact, the A3 is only second to the SV98 in that regard. 
The magazine size saw a buff from 5 to 11, which emphasizes its role even more as an on-the-move sniper rifle. You could afford to miss a few shots here, as you'd always be likely to chamber another round in time. One downside of the rifle is its much slower bullet velocity of just 490 meters a second, which doesn't bode well for long-range combat. The rifle is much more suited to mid-range, it works well in urban environments like Seng Crossing and Operation Metro, where you can peek corners, fire at targets, rechamber rounds much faster, and be ready for the enemy to rush you. The M40 in Battlefield 3 changed significantly from Bad Company 2, but it became my favourite rifle for the same reason that it did in Bad Company 2. If you equip one of the long-range scopes like the 8x rifle, it just looks absolutely gorgeous on the screen. And now we come to Battlefield 4, and for me this is perhaps the lowest point in the franchise for the rifle, but overall the M40 has still always been a very good choice when it comes to picking a sniper rifle, and really it was the tale of the typical dice nerf that sort of made it not quite as great in Battlefield 4. The weapon is a further iteration ahead of the one in Battlefield 3, so here the M40 has progressed to the A5 variant, but it barely makes a difference in game. The A5 on release was very similar to the A3 in Battlefield 3, offered a fast rate of fire and reload speed, and that made it great as a mid to close range aggressive sniper rifle. But as always, it struggles to compete at longer ranges with weapons like the Gold Magnum and the M98B. It was definitely my favourite rifle for a long time in Battlefield 4 because, as mentioned, it behaved almost identically to the Battlefield 3 version. But, more recently, and it was about a year ago now, the weapon was nerfed to reflect some real-world statistics. Dice LA reduced the ammo count from 11 to 6 rounds in a magazine, making its versatility in close quarters much lower than it was before. They basically removed its headline feature. The nerf signalled the end of my love interest with this weapon in Battlefield right now, and it caused me to switch over to the M98B. There is no denying its fast rate of fire is still a huge benefit when looking to be that aggressive recon, but having to reload more often can put you at a massive disadvantage, especially when things are popping off all around you and you've forgotten to keep a check on your ammo count. So, the M40 rifle has seen some love and some nerfs over the last few games, but it's definitely a weapon that fits right into the modern military setting, so I'm sure we'll be seeing it in future Battlefield games that use the present day. It's such an iconic design that it'd be a shame not to see it again, and it would be nice as well if next time we do see it that it's improved over the current Battlefield 4 version. Thanks very much for watching, let me know down in the comments what weapon you want to see in the next episode of Through the Ages, and while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.